Hello. Last year, I had a gap year and pretty much worked the whole year, pretty much roughly, which meant I had a lot of money. Well, a lot of my own money, relatively speaking, that I could spend. And so I'm just here just to show off some cool shit I got from last year and tell some cool personal stories with said shit. The first really cool thing I got was the Street Fighter 2 arcade one-up cabinet. I've been wanting that thing for a, the longest time. So when I worked a 16 hour shift at a pretty sketchy place, I had was like, wow, I've never seen this much money. I've never owned this much money. So I was just like, well, now now's the time to get this thing that I've always wanted. So yeah, I ended up getting it right away when I got my pay, <laughs> which was very irresponsible. I ended up getting it and it's really, really cool. It's a really cool showpiece. And whenever mates come around, we always just like gather around the arcade cab and just like, yeah, Street Fighter. It's really cool. It has like all the versions of Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter 1, uh, Dark Stalkers, uh, 1944, I think, uh, and some other games. I can't remember. It has 12 games. And it, at the moment, it just kind of sits there gathering dust. It's, it's, it, it wasn't the smartest investment, but it was just so cool. Owning a cabinet, like owning an arcade cabinet. Granted, it's not one from the 90s, but still, how cool is that? How many people do you know have an arcade cabinet to call their own? Not too many. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm cool that way. <laughs> I've also got a couple of really dumb, cheap games that I thought was like, this is a really funny thing and really cool thing to add to the collection. So here's some things that I've got. Some of these games I got purely because I thought the development history is so much more funny than and more interesting than the game itself. And one of those examples is Mighty Number no. 9 <laughs> for PlayStation 4. I found it pre-owned in the pre-owned bin of EB Games and <laughs> nobody wanted it. It has everything that came with it. It came with the art of <laughs> Mighty Number no. 9. It, it, it came with a poster. <laughs> It came with the poster and it was just sitting in the bin in those bins that they just put out front in the store and nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. So I, I obviously picked it up and <laughs> surprise, surprise, it's a shit game. An another one of these smart business transactions was Blandin Wonderworld. Another one of those games where the development history is just so much more funny and interesting than the game itself. Yuji Naka tried to make a platformer for Square Enix and failed miserably because he only used one button for everything. All the face buttons, uh, X, square, triangle, and circle, they're all mapped to jump. And it is so stupid. I played it for a half hour, laughed at it, and I was done with it. And it's a real shame that this, this game is how it is because the art style is beautiful. Everything about the game is amazing, except the gameplay. And it's, it's a shame because they had so much faith in it that in every copy, they have this little ticket. They have this little ticket where it has the, the original release date of the game. And it's just, it's so cute. They even have, it's, they even have like a signature of Blanda. It's so, so cute, but the game shit, which is really sad. Here's a game that I bought from Impulse. It's um, Toho Genso Rando Bullet Ballet. I only bought this because, oh, it's Toho. I thought it was gonna be a bullet hell game. It is not, in fact, the bullet hell, I mean, kinda is, kinda not. I've only played it for a half hour, so I don't know shit about the game. It is like a fighting bullet hell game. It is very odd, it's very strange, and I didn't like it, and it was, it, I don't know. I didn't play it for too long. I have it purely for Toho. And the music, music's amazing, but I don't know nothing about it. Another funny thing I found in the bin at EB Games was Knack. It's it's Knack, baby. <laughs> That's the only reason why I bought it, because it's it was one of the first PlayStation games on the PS4, and it's Knack. That's it. <laughs> and this is pretty much my only sealed game that I will probably ever own, and it is Puyo Puyo Tetris 2. Found this at JB Hi-Fi for nine bucks. It will 
it's well worth it because it's Puyo Puyo Tetris. And that's it. Another cheap game that I found at JB <laughs> was SNK Heroines. And I thought to myself, how could I not at $15, how can I not buy this shit post of a game? I I'm not I'm not even that a fan of SNK, but having Terry Bogart as a girl is <laughs> really funny. It it's his a button mash. It is a party game, if anything. It is a party game, but it is a damn good chuckle. Some really cool finds that I had in last year. So I had some cool finds, and some of these cool finds includes Persona 5, the original Persona 5 Steelbook Edition, which I found once again at EB Games in the pre-owned bin. Some idiot traded this in, and it is pretty good. It is in pretty good nick. Like this is sexy. This is in pretty good nick. And game included, because of course. And wh when I walked in and I was looking through the, the bin, I was just like, wait a minute. This is Persona 5, vanilla, steelbook edition. And nobody wanted this? Nobody, who, who, who was the madman who traded this game in? <sighs> uh, it baffles me to this day, but regardless, got this game, very happy about it. And sits on my shelf and it's really cool. A cool game that released last year, well, at least physically, was them f Dem's Fighting Herds. I The main reason why I got it, well, I had two reasons. Cause like, it's one, it's a fighting game. I'm a very casual fighting game fan. I'm not the kind of guy to put thousands upon, well, hundreds of hours into a fighting game just to learn combos and okizeme and whatever have you. I just, I just cannot be fucked. I can't be fucked. But this game really interested me because for one, the art style is pretty good. And the development history is unique as well, because initially the developers of this game, they made a My Little Pony fighting fan game, but then Hasbro was like, no, don't do that. We don't want our characters fighting. So they went out of their way to make their own original characters. And the cool thing was that the creator of My Little Pony helped them create designs and, and refine the art style of this game. So that's really cool. Now, I need to tell you this because it is gonna transition, segue into something else. Cause I got a job at EB Games. It is a dream job for someone like me. Just like, I love customer service. I love helping people out and being in an environment where it's just like, hey, I know games. It's really cool. It is so cool. It is a dream job. And I love helping moms out just like, oh yeah, so this is this, this is that. And it is, it is a dream job. And there's some benefits. <laughs> well, the main thing is 20% discounts, which is amazing. But also a thing that is really cool is that sometimes you get free shit. <laughs> And when Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out, there was a steelbook case. I didn't know that. And we had, in my store at least, we had quite a few steelbook cases. And I asked the big man, the big boss man, if I could have one of these for free. So now I have this. I have a steelbook case of Violet, Pokemon Violet. And same thing for uh, Sonic Frontiers. I actually went down to a different EB game store and apparently they were taking out some stock and they were taking this Sonic Frontiers steelbook case. They were taking it out for some reason and I just asked, hey, um, can I buy it? Can I just take one of these and just hand it over to me? I was buying another game. I was buying Klonoa at the time, but uh, right place at right time. So cool. <laughs> And for some reason, it's a real shame though, because um, when people trade in like special edition games, like with big boxes, we can't put that on the shelf because it is straight out too big. So we end up chucking a lot of special edition stuff away. So in some cases, we just take it home. <laughs> I take it home. And a really special case was somebody was trading in a whole like a bit chunk of their library and they traded in Spider-Man. <laughs> they traded in Spider-Man on PlayStation 4. So um, by technicality, I have a special edition of Spider-Man PS4. I already had the game, but I now have the art book and steel book case 
of Spider-Man on PlayStation 4 because someone traded it in. I don't know, man. It's really cool. Another thing I got, which was amazing, was Taiko no Tatsujin Rhythm Festival. There were some dramas before I started working there. I don't know. And um, this copy of Taiko was sitting in the back for months. And I was mentioning to the big man, the big boss, that I was really tempted to get Taiko on the Switch. And he was just like, just buy this. It's better if you just buy this. And I was just like, really? Really, big boss man? And he was like, yes. Just buy it. It's better if you buy it than somebody else. And thus, I got this at a discounted price because the employee discount. So, and Taiko games are really hard to come by. And just owning Taiko no Tatsujin with, with the drum is just amazing. I love this game franchise. I love the arcade game. And just owning, having this at home, it's just so cool. It is one of the coolest things I've owned. And the story is just, it's, it, it, it's so cool. I love it. And um, while the big boss man, big boss man, Mr. Big Boss Man, he is a collector in and of himself. Uh, this is just like one thing I just want to say because he is a big collector. And I do, uh, I, I dabble here and there, obviously. And I was at a cousin's place and we were we were doing something else. We were, do, we were, we were filming a project for him and he was also moving. So I had, a, I had a peek at some of his old games and he had quite the collection. Some of these games were really neat. I got, I got four games, but these are the main three that I want to show off first. So I got, well, me, I got a Hatsune Miku game for the 3DS, which is really cool. It's really neat. It's just a cute game. Uh, I haven't played this yet because I haven't used my 3DS in months, but I plan to play it soon because Hatsune Miku is just really cool. Uh, Sonic Unleashed for the Wii. I have it on PlayStation 2, but it's just really cool to own a good game on a, another cool system. And the main attraction, well, the second main attraction that I got from his stash was the orange box from the 360. Orange box from the Xbox 360. This is just game in history all in one. It is just one of the coolest things to own. It isn't it isn't in the best nick, but it's still cool to own. I don't even play the Xbox. Uh, I don't play the Xbox at all. I'm planning to get the Series X and when I do, I'm planning to play this first thing. It is just really cool to have. And the main thing that I was really proud of in his collection was Pokemon Platinum Verge. I think I played this once as a kid and didn't really like it for some reason. So um, it is really cool just to own a Pokemon game from back in the day. And the, f the thing I want to flex about is that I got this for $50 and I got all these games for $50. <laughs> and Pokemon Platinum, whoops, Pokemon Platinum for $50 is up fucking steal it is a enormous steal and the big boss man collector in and of himself um we were having a chat about pokemon platinum and turns out he bought this game a week before for 250 dollars so i was just really proud of myself for buying the exact same game for a fraction of the price it was just like a fuck you moment it was it's still really surreal just to have something like this and mind you, I am a nerd, so I do have some other things I want to show off that's not gaming related. I started making Lego, I started collecting Lego sets, well, I started getting into Lego. I've got the Sonic the Hedgehog Lego set, also the Mario Bowser, the ship, the battleship, and also got the Lego Lightyear set, which I was really excited for the movie, but then the movie was really mid. But the build itself is really cool. And I got a couple of manga here and there. I started reading a whole bunch of Komi. I'm pretty much up to date with the English translation and I've finished the whole anime. I fucking love it. And I was out with a mate and I found this. Initially, it's nothing really special. It's just Jojo part three, volume one. But the funny thing about this is, is that <laughs> it's a misprint. Everything is upside down. <laughs> so when I picked this up, 
I'm like, mm, yes, mm, yes, Jojo, Jojo. And then when I open it up just to like skim it, cause like, Jojo, I find out that everything is upside down and I had, I had to buy it on the spot. So yeah. Here's the, here's the opening cover, and here's a full page spread of Jotaro Kujo, upside down. It is, it is really funny. One last thing I kind of want to show off. One last thing I want to show off before I started working at EB. The big boss man convinced me to buy this Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. It is a really neat collectible. It has a LCD screen, and you can play The Legend of Zelda. Zelda 2 and Link's Awakening. It is really cute, but it was damn expensive. And he coerced me into buying it. Regardless of what he says, he coerced, he, he, he seduced me into buying this. It's still really cool. This is a neat, cute collectible. But yeah, 2022 was a really fun year, really big year for me. Now that I look back on it and not just because of all these gaming shit, just in general. Um, this long backstory, but yes, this is pretty much all I want to show off today. And I hope that you are having a lovely day, a lovely afternoon, evening, and um, I will see you whenever I see you. Bye.